Hello, everyone, and welcome to Future News Daily, where I bring you the latest advancements in technology, longevity, science, medicine, and AI. Today is Friday, January 6, 2023. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bells. With that being said, well, let's get started. I know we've been waiting for this technology for a long, long time, and it might be the year for it, for the first generations of it. So TLC introduces groundbreaking augmented reality glasses at CES 2023. These are called TCL Ray Neo X2. So they offer a true smart wearable experience that unlocks a deeper connection between users, devices, and the real world. A pioneer in display technology and affordable world-class smart experience, TCL launches the TCL Ray Neo X2023 augmented reality smart glasses at CES. These revolutionary glasses benefit from pioneering binocular full color micro LED optical waveguide displays, along with a host of new interactive features to enable users to experience unparalleled AR. So I've never heard of that type of display and the long title, so we'll just go over it again. Binocular full color micro LED optical waveguide displays. TCL Ray Neo CEO Howie Lee said in a statement, quote, TCL Ray Neo has created the world's first binocular full color micro LED optical waveguide AR glasses. <laughs> Saying the same thing again. This glass is developed by Ray Neo. It will set the bar for future innovations in wearable AR without sacrificing high end technology, style, or ease of use. The Ray Neo X2 is the new frontier of AR glasses, and we're just getting started. The TCL Ray Neo X2 draws attention as it is the first product in the world to use a binocular full-color micro-LED optical waveguide display. So I have to say that three different times. <laughs> it's a mouthful. Overcoming the industry challenge of making AR glasses look like traditional glasses without sacrificing technical features, the TCL Ray Neo X2 features a thin and light frame for everyday use while offering powerful all-in-one assistant features from smart navigation and automatic translation to photography and music playback. Significant screen upgrades, including a high contrast ratio of up to, what is it, 100,000 to 1, and outstanding image brightness of up to 1,000 nits. I'm not sure what unit that is. Create enhanced visual effects, making AR glasses ideal for both indoor and outdoor use. Powered by the Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 platform, the TCL Ray Neo X2 leverages cutting-edge AR technologies that allow users to see the world in new and exciting ways. TCL Ray Neo X2's intelligent GPS navigation system uses simultaneous localization and mapping along with motion recognition. The mapping feature turns your walks and bike rides into delightful city explorations by showing you nearby landmarks as you move. So I'm really curious what the display actually looks like, like what it's showing you in the, the AR overlay of the real world. Like, is, are you seeing a layout of the map on the screen or like on the road in front of you? Of course, that's what we all want to see. So I'm sure we will get those at some point or maybe they're already out. Plus, the TCL Ray Neo X2's Bluetooth-enabled on-screen message and call notifications keep you updated wherever you go, whether you're traveling or on the go. The TCL Ray Neo X2 also breaks down language barriers and opens up new ways to connect. Ooh, artificial intelligence translation translates multiple languages in real time. That is super cool. That, wow. I wonder if it displays on your screen, I guess, as like a, a prompt. I'm assuming that's what it would look like. These AR glasses automatically detect face-to-face -face conversations and translate the conversations into different languages in the form of on-screen subtitles. So yeah, that's what I was thinking. This feature makes the glasses the perfect device for those who want to make business connections and travel abroad. Translation features provide immersive language learning experiences for the user. So yeah, imagine if you were to use this feature, it would probably not take you that long to learn that actual language. You're seeing the translation in front of you in real time. You're hearing it, you're immersed in it. That would be a really great way to learn a new language. TCL Ray Neo X2 liberates users to explore new forms of entertainment. The hands-free integrated camera enables users to create new styles of content by allowing them to capture photos, videos, and time-lapse footage from their unique first-person view. Intelligent features like image stabilization reduce shakes and movements, and automatic night mode makes it possible to capture vivid moments even in the dark, helping to get the perfect shot every time. The images recorded on the glasses can be easily transferred to smartphones. This comes in handy when sharing new discoveries with friends on social media. I would like 
something like this, some instant cloud storage. So of course, you probably can't fit that much in these glasses. They, they got to be cloud based. In addition, you can enjoy your quote unquote time for yourself by listening to your music in the unique whisper mode. Thanks to this mode, your privacy is protected while effectively preventing the sound you're listening to from being heard from the outside. As a testament to its commitment to AR innovation, TCL Ray Neo will also launch a developer project in the first quarter of the year, urging innovative developers to develop creative, user-centric features for AR glasses. With this project, TCL aims to further enhance the Ray Neo X2 with more impressive features, taking AR applications with and imagination to the next level. Howie Lee said, quote, with the launch of TCL Ray Neo X2, we aim to create a vibrant and comprehensive AR ecosystem to deliver rich content and engaging services to our users. These include a number of original AR games developed by our team. On the other hand, TCL and Nextwear S wearable display glasses are also entering the U.S. market at CES 2023. Huh. So they have two different flagship AR glasses developed for the end consumer, the stylish XR. Oh, these are goggles come with a stunning display and sound quality upgrades. It offers a cinematic audiovisual experience anywhere, anytime, with its next generation dual 130 pixel micro OLED screen and unique acoustic phase shifting mode, offering a high definition viewing environment equivalent to 1080 inches from four meters away. Ranging from the TCL and Xwear S to the TCL Ray Neo X2, this line of innovative products showcases the strong research and product development capabilities of TCL Ray Neo, an industry leader in the AR innovation powered by TCL Electronics. So I can't wait to see these in motion, man. It's still yet to be seen whether this will be the new, where this model will take over the smartphone, you know. I find it hard for that to be the case. A lot of people aren't going to want just something completely wearable. You want something you with buttons, you know, that you can touch. And that's my opinion. I don't... Of course, I don't know. We'll see. But this is really, really cool nonetheless. Very exciting because I know it's been decades and decades since we've been waiting for this product. And it seems like it's finally there in its infancy. Yes, but finally there. Yeah, more from that in the future. Moving on. Aska's ludicrous SUV sized flying car gets closer to reality at CES. So this is pretty much almost entirely a CES video today because, of course, that's the coolest thing going on right now. In a field of high-tech cars as crowded as CES 2023, it takes a lot to stand out. But the Aska A5 does one trick not even the wildest Mercedes can compete with. It flies. On Wednesday, the Silicon Valley Upstart unveiled the first fully functional prototype of the A5, an electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicle, EVITOL for short, that the company claims will hit both roads and skies in 2026. Previously, it has only demonstrated a small-scale prototype. So the wingspan on this thing is huge. This was the first image that I saw, not realizing that it was a folded up image of it. So this full, I mean, this is huge. This is, a, I don't know how this would fit on any regular sized road or, you know, I, I don't know. It looks pretty gigantic. Flying cars may elicit a reflexive eye roll after years of promises that never quite came to fruition, but the Aska has a few benefits that may make it more reasonable than its vaporware predecessors. For one, it doesn't need a runway. As the VT in Evital implies, it can take off vertically anywhere a helicopter could, using six electric motors that fan out from its body on arms, making it look like a drone. After reaching altitude, two of those arms tilt forward to act as wings. On the ground, the A5 can operate as a car using an electric motor powering each of four wheels. Aska claims those motors should be powerful enough to whisk it to 70 miles per hour and take off from a runway in less than five seconds, a more efficient way to get airborne than the Evital feature. The A5 boasts a claimed range of 250 miles in the air, but that's not all from its lithium-ion batteries. It also uses a gasoline engine as a range extender to charge the batteries just like early EVs, so the hybrid style. The same dual power arrangement acts as a safety feature since the engine can act as a generator in the event of battery failure. And if things really go south, a ballistic parachute deploys to float the whole thing back to Earth safely. So I know what some of you instantly thought, because what I thought, you know, oh, we're going the EV set, you know, direction. Why do they have any gasoline in this thing? You are going to really want these fail safes in these airborne vehicles because the risk of that battery going wrong, of course, you're going to want to back up. You don't want that thing falling out the sky. Aska is already taking pre-orders for the A5 online. A $5,000 refundable deposit gets you a place in line to eventually plunk down $789,000 for the real deal. Quite expensive. 
But if that's a bit out of reach, ASCA also intends to sell access to the A5 as a service in major cities and their surroundings, in which a certified pilot will pick you up and ferry you to your location. While cars may typically take center stage, CES is no stranger to aircraft. In 2020 and 2019, respectively, both Hyundai and Bell showed off electric aircraft they claimed would help usher in the age of flying taxis. Both were supposed to be partners for Uber Elevate before the rideshare service sold off that department in the depths of the COVID pandemic. A lot to look forward in this industry. So actually, this reminds me of the very early Ford Model T when that kicked off the race for the industry leader in the automotive sector. So this is now kicking off the potential. So what what takes place in these situations when you have a new invention and it, people obviously realize there's a new market to be capitalized on from this new invention that is going to be a very big part of people's lives. When the car came out like that to that degree in the early 1900s, there were over 100 different automotive companies because they were all trying to come out with their model of the car that we know today. And they all looked very different, not at all like the ones we use today, because that model, you know, won out of the 100 companies. The all other ones went out of business. The winner was extrapolated. And so that's what we're going to see with this industry. So you're going to see dozens, hundreds of different companies and different styles of electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. And it might take, you know, 10 years, 10, 15 years before there's one true obvious winner. But once that happens, you're going to see massive exodus of all these failing companies from the industry and they're going to latch on to the winning model and run with that and extrapolate that. And that's when you're really going to see that industry, you know, reach a level of maturity. So again, this might be well into the 2030s, but that is how those things tend to work out. So yeah, I do expect to see it play out like that. Uh, moving on. So this is kind of strange. <laughs> CES 2023 piloting self-driving stroller powered by artificial intelligence. Is it family friendly? I don't know if I would be comfortable with, with, with leaving, letting this thing push itself. But yeah, let's read on and see what's going on. CES is a technology event that showcases and demonstrates new and innovative technologies. It's a place where major companies conduct business and find new partners and where innovative individuals can present their ideas. The Consumer Technology Association organizes the event and covers all aspects of the technology industry. Glucskind, a baby gear startup based in Canada, was showcasing its Ella AI-powered smart stroller at CES. The smart stroller is equipped with technology similar to that found in autonomous cars and delivery robots, such as a dual motor system for uphill walks and automatic downhill brake assist. It also has sensors that detect objects around it, but the company emphasizes that it is intended to provide additional support to caregivers rather than replace them. The Ella stroller can navigate sidewalks and drive itself hands-free when no child is inside. It uses cameras to monitor its surroundings and make sure it avoids obstacles. Glutzkind has provided a YouTube video demonstrating some of the stroller's capabilities to reassure parents concerned about using a self-driving stroller. In the video, the stroller can automatically stop when a toy falls out and begins to roll away, and it can also continue moving on its own while a parent carries the child. Self-driving technology is still developing and has not yet been fully proven or widely adopted. Here's an image of it down here. While some companies implementing self-driving technology in cars claim that it can increase safety when used correctly and the driver is attentive, it is not for everyone. Glucskind, founded in 2020, has added some stroller-specific features to Ella, such as an automatic rock my baby function and a built-in white noise machine to help soothe sleeping toddlers. The stroller includes a car seat, infant bassinet, and a toddler seat. So that probably is saving you a little bit of money right there or offsetting the massive cost of this thing, I can only imagine. On the other hand, in March 2022, Honda and Sony announced a collaboration to develop a battery-powered electric SUV. The project was eventually turned into its own company, Sony Honda Mobility. A year after the initial announcement, the company unveiled its prototype called the Athela at CES 2023, so I haven't seen a picture of that. Actually, let me look this up just really quick. I just want to see what this looks like. Mm, it looks kind of, eh, nothing crazy. I'm not going to go into that right now. But that is the uh, Sony Honda Collaboration Electric Vehicle. Again, there's going to be hundreds of those. So 
I will definitely, of course, I'm sure we'll all be buying an electric vehicle at some point. I would still wait. I, I don't like buying things when it's so early in the game that it's hard to tell who the winner is because you might be buying the wrong product. Just like buying like the first gen of a game system, you know, I want to wait till the kinks are out. The Afila is based on the Vision S02 prototype originally shown at the event. Ann Hunger, the CPO and co-founder of Gluxkind, stated in a press release that their own experiences inspired the development of the LS Stroller as new parents. The stroller, which weighed 30 pounds and was named an Innovation Awards honoree at the 2023 CES show, can be pre-ordered for $3,300. I was expecting closer to five, personally. Deliveries of the stroller are expected to begin in April this year, according to the company's website, as reported by CNN. While CES organizers claim that the attendance at the event is returning to pre-pandemic levels, the ongoing, in some places, pandemic has still impacted. In 2021, CES was held entirely online, and last year it was a mix of in-person and online events, with a smaller number of attendees in Las Vegas. This year, TV and appliance makers and startups working in artificial intelligence are participating in CES, with Meta allowing people to try out its latest virtual rowdy gear and Google showcasing its smart home products. So since this video is for commercial purposes, I think it's okay to play. Just show a little clip of this real quick, see what we can get. That's, that ain't happening. <laughs> There's no way I'm not letting, touching that thing when it's going down. It's, I guess it's how much do you trust this technology, you know? Like, do you, just because we all know technology can malfunction, bugs, etc. That's the real issue there, is how reliable is this? And it needs to be 110% reliable because <laughs> my child is in there, you know? So I, I don't know if this will catch on. I really don't. I don't, I don't think people would trust that enough to put their kid in it and not touch it, you know? <laughs> so anyway, I think we got enough of that. Last one up for you guys today. Off the CES stuff now. So Airbus joins Star Lab in the commercial space station project. So all pretty interesting stuff today. Airbus Defense and Space is joining a commercial space station project led by Voyager Space, a move that could potentially make it easier for European governments to use the station after the retirement of the International Space Station. So Denver-based Voyager Space announced on January 4th that a partnership with Airbus on its Starlab commercial space station project announced a partnership with Airbus on its Starlab commercial space station project. Airbus will provide technical design, support, and expertise for Starlab, the company said, but did not disclose additional details about the partnership or financial terms. Voyager Space announced plans for Starlab in October 2021, working with Lockheed Martin. Starlab, as described at the time, would feature an inflatable module, docking node, and bus capable of hosting up to four astronauts at a time. Voyager Space, through its subsidiary NanoRacks, won one of the three NASA Commercial Low Earth Orbit Development, or CLD, awards from NASA in December 2021. The $160 million Space Act Agreement is intended to support design work on Star Labs as NASA prepares to transition from the ISS to commercial space stations by the end of the decade. So a big change up there. That transition will also involve NASA's international partners on the ISS, something that both Airbus and Voyager space officials alluded to in the announcement of their partnership. Quote, working with Airbus, we will expand Star Labs ecosystem to serve the European Space Agency and its member state space agencies to continue their microgravity research in LEO, low Earth orbit. This was said by Dylan Taylor, chairman and chief executive of Voyager space said in the announcement. Quote, this collaboration is an important step in making Star Lab a reality, providing a foundation for long-lasting European and American leadership in space, said Jean-Marc Nassir, Executive Vice President of Space Systems at Airbus Defense and Space, in the same statement. ISS partners have pondered how they will make use of commercial space stations run by American companies. Current ISS arrangements where space agencies barter for services are unlikely to apply to commercial facilities where agencies may have to work directly with the station's operator rather than through NASA. 
Quote, we need to find ways to work together, certainly in other ways than we did before, said Peter Graff, Director of Applications and Science at the German Space Agency. Quote, there are a lot of options available, and the main players are in heavy discussions on that. Direct payments from the European governments to American companies for use of commercial space stations could be politically problematic. Quote, the taxpayers in Europe don't want to pay directly to private American companies. This is said by Nicholas Maubert, space counselor at the French Embassy in the U.S. and representative of the French Space Agency, CNES, in the U.S. at a conference panel. So pretty uh, the guy to, to talk to about this stuff. Those concerns may be alleviated, though, if companies from Europe and other ISS partners are involved with these stations. ESA officials who are beginning work on their post-ISS plans are aware of those concerns. Quote, shall we pay directly to commercial providers in the U.S.? We can, of course, but that is euros directly supporting U.S. industry. Is that something Europe wants to do, that our member states want to do? Said Frank DeWine, head of ESA's European Astronaut Center, in an interview during ESA's Ministerial Council meeting in Paris in November. How ESA will deal with commercial space stations is something the agency will study leading up to its next Ministerial Council meeting in 2025, but he said one option would be for ESA to fund development of a European crewed vehicle that could service those stations. Quote, if we talk to commercial providers today, to the CLDs that are being funded by NASA, they all tell us the same thing. They are interested in transportation. For them to keep their costs low on transportation, they want competition. It's as simple as that. Airbus is not the first European company to be involved in a commercial space station project. Thales Alina Space is building modules for Axiom Space that will initially be installed on the ISS, but eventually be detached to form a commercial space station. So much is changing up in this decade. You know, of course, I'm doing these videos almost every day, five days a week. And it's almost every day that it's like heavy hitting articles, basically every day. So, you know, it really goes to that, that what's, what's that quote? There are decades where nothing happens and then there are weeks where decades happen. And in this case, there, I guess there's the decade where a hundred years happen <laughs> of this, that will be the 2020s. Anyway, that is the last article I have for you today. Don't forget this video is for educational purposes only. I will never recommend any investments. So let's your time or money attempt to contact you on any other platform or own any rights to the information within this content. With that being said, thanks for tuning in and see you in the next one.